I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Welcome back, everybody, to Big Apple Hockey's Bar Talk, where we gauge our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. Are you going to buy everybody around? You're so confident. I mean, it is 1244 on a Saturday. So, yeah, that would be great. Are you? That's Jesus Eastern Eagle Standard Time. Or, or are you just like so-so, you'll have a beer. So, we are going to start with this, Philk. Alexei Lafreniere will stick on the top six the rest of the season. Top Go. line, you mean? Yeah, top line. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm buying everybody around on this. I and because I, I I for once now have the confidence in Alexi Lafreniere to deliver consistent hockey on a game to game basis. Remember what I told you earlier on in the year about how I thought that Gerard Gallant finally found the right button to push with Chris Kreider to get him to play on a night to night basis. Yeah, I think Gerard Gallant has found that button with Alexi Lafreniere. I, I truly wow. do. I truly do because uh, that was the best effort I've seen from him in his entire career. A goal, assist, good defensive play, engaged along the boards, skating fast. Maybe his skating and conditioning are improving before our eyes and we're finally seeing it. But something is there with Alexi Lafreniere. He looks like he's involved. But I I, I, I don't see him turning back now at this point. I, I, I think Gerard has really – Really kind of, like I said, push that right button. And it, it just, he's giving the efforts that Turk wants him to give at this point. And I, I think he's going to stay. So. I'm going to go beer. Uh, the reason why is because I can see them moving around the lineup a little bit. Capocaco coming in. Um, uh, him coming back. Uh, Vitaly Kratzoff has a possibility next month. Who knows? Maybe he shifts I, things around. I don't think he should. I don't think you should. I'm, I'm I don't. I don't think he's going anywhere at this point. The good. Then I hope that's the case. But uh, and lines I definitely tend to change. Don't think Capo Caco is going to change that. Yeah, especially not right now. No. But I think also there are changes that need to be made on this on this team, especially on the bottom six. And uh, I think if Lafreniere gives another game like he did against the Capitals, and he was great, not good. He was great against the Capitals. He was great. So hopefully more games like that to come. Going on tonight, the stadium series will be playing with Tampa Bay visiting Nashville at Nissan Stadium. Philk, stadium series still has its luster. I'm going to say beer because it's not the spectacle. Um, I, I don't think it was ever the spectacle that the Winter Classic was because the Winter Classic was – always kind of presented with more priority. I mean, I went to the very first stadium series game between the Rangers and the Devils. And I went to the second one. Yeah, to the Islander uh, Ranger one, yeah. That was cold. Yeah, yeah. That, the Those Devils two games were, were cold. cold. But you guys were at night, and it was even worse. So you guys were in, like, the teens, and you had the wind chill, and you felt like you were in negative weather out there. Uh, that sucked. So, yeah, the wind chill for your game wasn't that great either. No, it wasn't, but I, I was layered so heavily, and we were out in the sun, so we got it, it felt warmer than it actually was. But um, it, it it's still fun to watch, and it's still cool to see you know outdoor games and baseball stadiums, and it's still a money maker. So that, in a sense, it does have a bit of a luster to it. But I mean. It's basically the winter classic, just with a different name. When you think about it, you know it, it, it. I don't know. I can't get excited. I can't get as excited for it, but it's still cool to see. Just don't give us garbage-looking jerseys like the Toronto one for the Heritage Classic. Yeah, <laughs> there's a Heritage Classic too. So this isn't an original idea. You know, it, it, it's. It's just, oh, no, Dave, no, David Wood. Not everybody loves new, ugly uniforms. <laughs> you want nice ones. Not ugly ones where it's just a T. What, what does the T stand for? Time out? Time out? <laughs> Trash? Oh, Come boy. On. 
Well, you know who loves uh, New Ugly jerseys? Justin Huberto. So it's uh, I'm gonna go. You know what? <clears throat> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna buy around on this, and the reason why it still has its luster is because to me, you could still do things with the Stadium Series. You can experiment things. Thank you very much, John. Uh, you could experiment with different teams at different locations. Let's be honest about something. If it was uh, that that first stadium series game with the Rangers and the Devils, the Rangers would be in a Winter Classic. When the hell do you think the Devils are getting a Winter Classic? At that time, the <laughs> Islanders would never get a Winter Classic. Now the Islanders could talk about a Winter Classic. There you go, Anthony. There's another way the Islanders' culture has changed. So some of those things are all, are all in there. But then you get cities like, I mean, uh, Los Angeles at Dodger Stadium. That wasn't a winter classic. Now that could be again. Uh, you have cities like Tampa Bay, uh, Florida, that all have now earned it. So this that's where you can use the stadium series to experiment and see whether or not people are going to be receptive to okay, that. Okay, okay. Going to your city. That's fine, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring an angle into this because you're talking about the word luster. Luster would mean like an exuberance to it. Uh, what you're really kind of asking is, does the stadium series still help the game? That's what I feel like you're asking, and that's absolutely something you buy around on. Yeah, but luster. I um, I think it's I think it's also it's you're gonna see a lot of people excited to see that game tonight. And you, you might get some people that tune in because it's another outdoor game. But they're also, you get to get the casual fan that might kind of balk at it, uh, being like, there's too many outdoor games. I don't think the casuals will balk at that. I think the diehards, like myself, that's kind of what I'm saying. I think, you know, but I mean, Lucas brings up a good point here. It, it does have luster for franchises that wouldn't get to normally host a Winter Classic, which you were kind of alluding to in your point. Yes. So, uh, but could you, this is another good comment here. Could you imagine a stadium series game at Tropicana and the lights going out in the middle of the game because the Tampa Bay uh, Tampa Bay Rays can't even keep their own electricity on? Joe, here's the funny part. That's where Tampa Bay originally started playing. They were at Tropicana Field. That was originally called the Thunderdome. The Lightning? No. Yeah, the Lightning. Tropicana Field. Tropicana wasn't built up until years later. The, the, the Lightning debuted in 92. All right. Well, we're not going to waste time on researching that because I do know that they played at a baseball stadium okay. before they before they went up on that one. I, I You know what? I, I could be wrong. Could have been something I learned when I was 16 years old and oh, then no. just learned Tropicana it wrong. Broke field. Wow. No, I'm wrong. Hold See, on. Good. I, I like I like hearing that I'm right. Ah! Shut up. <laughs> Ain't that right, Justin Huberto? But <laughs> yeah, Tropicana broke ground November 22nd, 1986. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I mean it, it's it's amazing because they, they played at a baseball stadium. So no, you're right. You're right. They, yeah, the, the, the Tampa Bay Lightning did. Wow, Mark Mark is right. Oh, okay. No, I won't push it any further. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh. So Shut again, up, by the way, you can see Tampa Bay versus, uh, sorry, Tampa Bay at Nashville. Well, versus Nashville uh, at seven thirty tonight, and I think it's actually this. Also, by the way, is their audition for them to get a Winter Classic. Nashville has been great, absolutely great for for hockey, and they they deserve some more. And it's not just because I met good people down there, and I got friends living down there now, but still, Phil, we're gonna go north of Nashville just a little bit, Vili Huso. We'll start game one of the playoffs for the St. Louis Blues. And here's what I'm going to do. Yep, I'm buying around. If you take Vili Husso's numbers, and they're great right now. He's 13-3-2. You can see the goals against right there. Save percentage nearly up. The goals against and save percentage nearly up where Sisterkin was. He was the guy that originally had the job that Jordan Bington took away. So I, I can't help but look at this and think, he should be game one starter and they should work on trying to sign him. He's going to be UFA at the end of the year, Phil. That's going to be, 
quite a sticky situation, and Jordan Bennington better find his game. Jordan Bennington led the NHL in goals against average in 2019 with a 1.89. He had a 9.27 save percentage. When they finally started starting him in January, they the St. Louis Blues took off from a last place team. You know the rest from there. I don't have to explain that again. But Billy Huso has given the St. Louis Blues the shot in the arm that they've needed in net. And Jordan Bennington looks like his career is starting to take a real nosedive. So, um, yeah, I'm buying around on this. If you if you're not starting Billy Huso, if you're if you're Berube, um, you deserve to lose your job. So because Billy Billy Huso has been that good, um, if he played more games, he'd be in the not only the Vezina conversation but the Hart conversation as well. I agree with that 100 percent as well, and. If you just look at Bennington's numbers, though, on top of that, just bringing them up, he's right about this. 12 10 with a 3.25 goals against and a 900 save percentage. A 3.25 goals against. This wouldn't even be a goalie controversy if he didn't sign an extension already. Like, that's, that's where the problem was. You rewarded him for winning a Stanley Cup in that great season. And and his results have been mixed since then. I'll say it nicely. 3.25. Yeah. They I mean, gave him that contract last year, though, too. So, it, 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 I mean, this is the first year of that, that, that six-year, $36 million deal. And, I mean, he has a he has a no trade, which is an 18-team list. Um, oh, oh, no, hold on. No, he has a full no trade now. And then in after the 23-24 season for 24-25 and on, those last three years, it's an 18-team no trade, then a 14-team, and then a 10-team no trade. So he's got to approve any deal that he uh, – uh, any deal that he's involved in. So this is this is going to be a sticky situation for St. Louis because they're going to have to sign – And who's- basically he's just uh, Sergei Bobrovsky in St. Louis. You got to hope that he plays his way out of it. Uh, yeah, with a far better contract. Yeah, I mean, Bobrovsky's contract is unreal. No, no yeah. matter what, the, the that that ship has sailed. He'll never live up to that. He's playing better this season, though. That's where the good part is on that one. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.